In 2006, Netflix announced that it had it set a prize of $1 million to any machine learning expert who could improve its recommender system. Netflix was not demanding a 100% improvement into its old system, but just a 10% increase. Indeed, this speaks volumes of how essential the recommender system is for the company. But what really is the recommender system? How does it work and why is it so important? Join us in this video as we look at recommender systems machine learning how it actually works, Netflix and Amazon. Let's get into it. Recommender System Most people with access to the internet and the online world may now be used to getting recommendations from different sites, ranging from friend suggestions on Facebook to product suggestions on Amazon or movie or video suggestions on YouTube. This concept has been around for several years and developed through machine learning. It is technically called the Recommender System, and several top leading executives have confirmed its importance. For example, in an interview, Ace Fenton, the manager for research and engineering at Netflix, indicated that 80% of what people play on the platform is through the use of the recommender system. So just imagine what Netflix would be without it. Luckily for them and other big brands, they do have it. But how do they work with it to produce results? The three steps below will give you all you need to know about the algorithm. Recommender Systems Machine Learning The Steps Basically, there are steps identifiable with the recommender system process. They are the candidate generation stage, the scoring stage, and the re-ranking stage. Perhaps the candidate generation stage is the most comprehensive, as most of the work is done there. There are two strategies involved there, and we will talk about them. Content-based filtering. This is one of the key strategies used in the candidate generation stage. While it might be considered the most prominent, the second strategy can only cover some weaknesses. We will talk about that soon, so stay with us. In content-based filtering, the algorithms use the similarities between products or items to suggest new ideas. In other words, features of an item or products are used to recommend additional items similar to what the user likes. For example, suppose user A buys a shoe from Amazon. In that case, the algorithm will compare the features of that particular shoe to other available shoes on the platform to show new suggestions. It might consider the brand type, the size, color, ratings provided to that shoe, or other essential features. By doing this, some suggestions may come up. But since they cannot all be displayed at once, another activity is done. More details will be provided shortly. The same can be said of Netflix. If a user watches, for example, Game of Thrones on the platform, the algorithm can use the genre of the movie, other movies of the characters, the ratings provided, or the likes in others to suggest other movies. The user might then end up with suggestions such as The King, Troy, and The Kingdom of Heaven, centered on political dynasties and battles. The mathematical underpinnings of content-based filtering are further explained in this video by a Harvard professor. This channel serves more insightful content like this, and we would be delighted if you would subscribe for all the latest news on futuristic ideas and machine learning ideas. Collaborative Filtering The most significant demerit of content-based filtering is that it is individual-based and can be limiting. Collaborative filtering is essential in filling in the gap before moving into the scoring stage, which we will talk about very soon. What collaborative filtering does is that instead of just picking a user's interest, it suggests the interest of another user. For example, if user A and B bought a Rolex watch from Amazon, and user 2 went on to buy a sneaker and a turtleneck, the sneaker and the turtleneck can be suggested to user A because they share similarities with user B. The same principle applies to Netflix as well. Recommendations are made based on similarities to movies the user has liked in the past and films that similar users liked. More insights on the collaborative filtering system can be found here. The scoring stage. Understandably, the candidate generation stage can produce several candidates that can serve a recommendation for a user. However, it is impossible to serve hundreds of recommendations at a time. It might not only appear dull, but it might as well be too broad for the user's liking. This is where the scoring stage comes in. This stage uses a model to score and display the best items to the user. Usually, Features are developed through a matrix factorization model, and according to Google Developers page, the parts that might be considered include user features that account for personalization, local versus distant items, that is, taking geographic information into account, popular or trending items, a social graph that is, items liked or recommended by friends. Those mentioned above can be used in addition to the candidate generation stage to score all suggestions on a scale between 1 and 10 and the top ones will again be subjected to further scrutiny. Re-ranking Once the candidate generation stage and the scoring stages have provided several suggestions through some rigorous tests, the final step is applied. The re-ranking stage is as crucial as the two stages above as it helps to re-rank the suggested items 
and provide the best for end users. Essentially, the re-ranking stage applies specific filters to get rid of some candidates or suggestions. This means that suggestions could pass the test and the scoring stage might fail in the final test, and will therefore not be considered a final suggestion for the user. Again, Google's developer training page recommends two essential filters that can be used in this stage, diversity and freshness. Diversity Diversity in recommender systems relates to how suggestions are provided to have a different variation than what is available through the first two stages. As explained earlier, the two stages try as much as possible to use the user's data and similarities to others to generate suggestions. However, a school of thought suggests doing so, and providing the closest suggestion can make a particular range boring. For example, the fact that a user loves watching The Voice on YouTube doesn't mean they would have to be given only suggestions for music shows like AGT. Instead, music videos and other talk shows involving celebrities can be suggested, and the same can be said about Amazon and Netflix. Freshness As the name implies, freshness demands that suggestions given to users are updated and fresh. It is thus incumbent on the recommender system to incorporate the latest usage information, such as current user history and the newest items, to help produce much more recent results. Obviously, the recommender system is complicated but very helpful in getting suggestions across. Once again, it points to the enormous contributions that machine learning makes to the online world and other aspects of our life. There are no doubts that there will be innovations to come, but in the meantime, you have put together a comprehensive video to look at some of the machine learning projects you may not have heard of yet. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time.